Hello everybody, it's Kellaxon here. If you guys enjoyed this video, remember to join our Discord server, become patrons over on Patreon, and uh, comment down below with your thoughts. So we're gonna be talking about leadership again. So if you guys already saw, there's a counter part, so to speak, uh, to this video. Uh, that is uh, regarding Ozpin and his leadership, but now uh, we are going to talk about Salem. And you guys may be like, but Cal, Salem's evil. She cannot be a good leader. And to that I say, that's not how this works. <laughs> leadership is defined as someone who is able to persuade people into following them or an ideal. Also, if you guys didn't watch the last video, I basically learned all this uh, when I was working with the police during the summer. They brought in a professor called uh, Rob... Elkington, I wonder if he'll ever know what I've, uh, what I've, I've done, done with, with I his knowledge. I wonder if he's sitting somewhere smoking his pipe in front of his fire. And watching and this. And wondering, like, I wonder if someone's talking about anime <laughs> and applying what I've yeah. taught them. Yeah, so basically, like, alright, so this is probably gonna be taken out of context real fast. Um, le we learned about leaders in class that were bad people, but good quote-unquote leaders. You do not have to be a good person to be a good leader. So your Hitlers and your Mussolinis of the I was world about to say, are unfortunately... Was someone, was someone being a little weird about Hitler? And unfortunately... Two, was that person you? Though? No. Unfortunately, they were good leaders despite... Good leaders that had bad agendas, basically. Right? And so leadership is about how well you persuade people into following an ideal, not what you are persuading them to do, right? People will trust you if they believe in your vision as a leader because the vision is what convinces people to fight for you. So, yeah. But, I mean, we don't know if Salem is evil. It could be Ozpin this entire time, so there's really that. Do that I don't think they're going to do that I don't know, I don't know. Like, do you really think, like, motherfucker, I've read fan fictions like that, but I've also seen fan fictions where it's why, or, like, Ruby fucks her weapon. Don't worry about that. So, first thing, I didn't time. mention this in the last video, but there's an idea here of over-promising and under-delivering. Um, the difference between Ozpin and Salem is that when Salem promises something, it's delivered. You want maiden powers? Here you go. You want to go fuck up Ozpin because he killed your sister? There you go. Everybody on- everything that she has so far promised, she promised the White Fang the fall of Beacon, and Beacon fell. You know? She promised- I I'm guessing she promised Watts that he would be able to do something freaky on people, like Mercury, I'm guessing that's where Mercury got his legs from. whoop de doo there you go, and, you know, Watts gets to hack things or whatever he wants to do, right? Uh, Cinder wants maiden powers, or she wants power in general, here you go, here are your powers. So Salem has actually fulfilled all of her promises, while Ozpin, you know, seems to be not making everybody so happy, right? So that's one. But first we're gonna talk about emergence and assigned leadership again. So where Ozpin was assigned to be the leader to kill Salem, we don't actually know how Salem got started, and I'm guessing that if they assigned Ozpin to kill her, that she's an actually an emergent leader. That an emergent leader basically is perceived by others as the most influential member of the group and emerges over time through communication, certain behavior, social involvement, and a highly are highly informed, seek opinions, and are firm in their beliefs, but not rigid. And the best leadership is for one to emerge, like I said in the last video. So, where Salem is kind of glowing here, is that she emerged, like, from the shadows to take over the world, instead of being assigned, because that showed that she was actually capable to do so. Because when somebody is instructed to do something, it's much different than a person that goes out and actually does it. If you guys are in high school and you've been like in a classroom setting where a teacher asks somebody a question and instead it's not the people that put their hand up, it's the person that they randomly just asked, you know what I mean? Like that's sort of, that's sort of the idea here is that you're being assigned by the teacher to answer a question which you may or may not know the answer to and then you have people that are emerging by putting up their hand and actually sort of, you know, willing and and know what they're talking about, you think. Are you salty about not being picked to answer Um, okay. Question, Anyways. This is an odd thing to hold on to. I'm now we're going to talk about transformational and pseudo-transformational leadership. So we mentioned this in the last video, but transformational leadership is the ability of a leader to get people to do more than what they originally expected to do in support of a large-scale innovation or change. So a pseudo-transformation 
traditional leader acts, but has no intention of sacrificing their self-interest or goods of others. They are self-serving and generally don't care about the people who follow them. And obviously, transformational is more effective since they encourage people to voluntarily change their behaviors, right? And it's not self-serving. You know what I mean? So with Salem, this kind of goes back to the over or the over promising under delivering thing which she doesn't do. It's that if she sort of says that she's going to do something, it ends up happening. Like transformational is as like horrible as this sounds. Uh tearing down like blowing up beacon or whatever you want to call it. That was a transformational act. However you kind of want to put it, that actually changed things and she got people to change things. So as bad as she is as a person, she is transformational in terms of her actions having changed uh, the stuff that is going on around her with, again, Beacon falling, you know, Cinder getting the maiden powers, like all of that sort of stuff shows that she is a transformational leader. Now, whether she'll sacrifice her, like, her own self-interest for others, I think that we can see that in the fact that what happened? Um, I don't know. So something that Salem does is that she tells Tyrion to go after the Spring Maiden, right? Uh, but then as soon as she sees that, you know, Cinder wants to uh, want somebody to go after Ruby, she decides, okay, my self-interest isn't important right now. Let's focus on Cinder's interest. And right, my own and she, -term gain yeah, there. exactly, and she switches gears, right, to give the illusion that she will give up her goals in order to support others and what they want, right? Uh, and so, even if it's fake, she still did it, and so that still has the same effect. So let's talk about VUCA and VUCA Prime again. Uh, so if you guys remember from the last video, if you guys watched it, VUCA is a volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous. Uh, volatile basically means, like, explosive. Uncertain is about the future, like an uncertain future. Complex is, like, the issues uh, that have many layers in the world and everything. The world is a very complex place. And ambiguous is that... You know, nothing is absolutely wrong or right in the world at large, and ambiguous is all also, like, confusion. Like, you don't know what's gonna happen next, right? So, how Salem counteracts this is volatility can be countered with vision. So, I'm not even exactly sure what Salem is trying to do, but if she's like, okay, you know, the if kingdoms... Fuck shit up, yeah, the kingdoms up. are a volatile... Uh, power structure that is destroying mankind. Let's just say that that's what she's going for here. Her vision is to get rid of them. That's a very, like, easy, you know, easy, like, point A to point B. You don't like the schools? We're gonna get rid of the schools, right? So that's her vision. So that is how the volatility has been counteracted, right? And, uh, you know, negating the turbulence to achieve success, right? Vision brings the ability to transform uncertainty into understanding by bringing everybody on the team together so, uh, you know, they understand uh, what they can do to contribute to success. So where Ozpin sort of fails and where Salem sort of shines is Salem gets everybody in a room together. They have a talk about what they're going to do. People ask questions if they have them, maybe some snarky remarks. Everybody goes home and they do what they're supposed to, right? There is clear communication and understanding between everybody on what they're supposed to do, why we're doing it, and how, right? Ospin has had no such team meeting uh, as of yet where he's explained some shit, right? Crow probably is the closest person to have one because he explained the gods, right? Complexity can be countered with clarity, and so that's kind of what we're saying. Everybody, cl like, is clear. They know what's going on. They know the plan. They know what they're doing. Ambiguity can be countered by agility, because what murkiness we tolerate in ambiguity won't matter next to the team working fast to respond to each other and destroy swamps of ambiguity relating to problems. So the quickness to respond thing, I think, is more like... So Salem, as soon as she knows that Tyrion has lost its tail, she calls Watson and is like, hey, can you make him a new one? Like, as soon as Mercury needs new legs, she gets him new legs. As soon as, like, Cinder, like, needs to start training to kind of get her, her power back, she starts training Cinder, right? It's a very, like, snappy sort of execution here. Like, we're doing things right away. Like, Hazel, you gotta go talk to the White Fang. Go. Like, you know what I mean? Like, everybody is very organized and things are being done very fast, right? So there's also that. So you can see how Salem is sort of succeeding here, which, is, which isn't which is good. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, she's losing to Ozpin in comparison to our last video, I think. 
So let's talk about the five bases of power now. Reverent, expert, legitimate, reward, and coercive. Reverent is, do people hold you in high regard? Do they like you? Everybody seems to have a high amount of respect for Salem. Um, within, uh, within her crew, so to speak. Like, Emerald is obviously afraid of her, which is something else. But Tyrion basically worships her like a goddess, right? Watts seems to have respect for her because after she's like, Hey, Watts, enough of that, he concedes, right? Sail or Cinder obviously respects her a lot. Uh, Hazel uh, seems to as well, right? People like, in within the team, except for maybe Emerald, people seem to like Salem, right? So that's one. Expert, does she know what she's talking about? It seems like that Salem has briefed her people on the powers and the relics and the gods and all of that crazy stuff in the world. Just based off of how they're sort of acting. Uh, you know what I mean? And how, like, obviously Cinder had to know uh, about all this because she's taking the maiden powers and whatnot. And, like, she has grim gloves and everything. And so it's kind of evident that Salem has shared some wor worldly knowledge and has shown her expert. Uh, legitimate. Does she hold a legitimate position of power? I mean, no, she doesn't. So that is where she sort of fails in Ozpin, uh, Ozpin wins. She doesn't really have a legitimate place of power. It's not like she's in government or in office or something. You know, she has legitimate power within her own domain, but she's not like a police officer or a public official or anything like that. So that's not relevant. So then you have reward and, uh, coercive coercion, if you want to call it that, too. So, reward is, like, for helping people out, do they feel appreciated, right? And, like, all of that stuff. So, hey, if you help me out, you'll avenge your dead sister. Hey, if you help me out, I'll give you unlimited power. Hey, if you help me out, I'll give you legs, right? Salem is somebody that if she's giving people something, there is a reward for working with her. If you want something, she will get it for you, right? She got Cinder part of the power that she wanted. She seems to have gotten, um, you know, Tyrion whatever he wanted in his life for her to worship him like this, right? Watts was a disgraced scientist and now he still gets to science th this boy up, right? So he seems to have gotten what he wants, and now, like, Hazel can hunt, like, down Ozpin through multiple bodies over and over and over again, right? And so everybody seems to have gotten something that they've wanted here. So they've gotten the reward, and they seem to feel appreciated. Now, coercive. So we talked about this last, uh, video, but being coercive can sometimes backfire. You gotta be careful. You have to instill enough fear that people are afraid of you, but not enough fear that they hate you and you lose your reverence. So take what Salem did to Tyrion, for example, right? She punished homeboy, but he still loves her. And Salem, or Cinder, I guess, like, watched her punish homeboy, but Cinder didn't seem to feel any different about her. Cinder was just sort of scared in that moment. It also really um, worked in Lionheart's case. Yeah, exactly, that she was able to sort of control Lionheart like that. Well, that was a bit of manipulation, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, but yeah, she seems to, like, they seem to go way back or something because, like, she mentions that, like, Lionheart and the time that we've known each other, right? So that is a little, that is a little bit of coercion, and it obviously did work for Lionheart, right? And so, just as a side note, like, people are like, the writing in Ruby is so bad, but, like, if you actually take, like, real-world concepts like this and apply it to the show, whether it was intentional or not, you can see that, like, there's something deeper going on here. Dr. You know Havenbauer, what I mean? whoever you talked about, he was actually a ghostwriter on Oh, Ruby. God. But you know what I mean? Like me they, and him are personal friends. Like, you someone's know. doing something behind the scenes to ensure that all of this is, you know, is happening, how we're explaining it sort of thing, right? Uh, then there's coercive, right? And so, we again, we talked about this. But Lionheart, you can see it. With Tyrion, you can see it. And you can upright see it with Raven. Raven is so afraid of Salem, she won't even fight back. And for Raven, that's kind of a big deal, you know what I mean? And obviously, Raven's not on her side, so that doesn't work in her favor, but by not fighting, you're effectively on her side. Does that make sense? It's like, it's like, if you don't vote, you're voting for the person who you don't like. Because you're not doing anything to change it. Have you ever heard that before? Yeah, I've heard that. Yeah, and so, like, something similar as to that is that by not fighting at all, it makes Salem more powerful. So, in, in turn, Salem also kind of wins that way. Right? A true leader 
needs to have a robust source of power that is more than a title, the ability to reward or punish, or access to information. You need expert power, which will get people to listen to you and trust you and respect what you say. That isn't just knowledge, but also skill. When people, when you prove you have these skills, people will say that you have expert power. Then we talked about reverent and uh, all of that stuff. And so you kind of see she has shown off her skills. People seem to know she can control the Grim, right? All of that stuff, too. So if you guys watched the last video, I asked Rob why manipulation isn't a good leadership tactic, and he said that even though it may work in the moment, eventually the leader will be found out uh, because they ha will have watched uh, them manipulate someone else. So I think that this is where Emerald sort of comes in. She'll watch what she has perceived as Salem manipulating Cinder, and that's what will get her mad, if you want to call it that, right? But, so far, nobody seems to be actually being manipulated. Everybody is getting what they want. You know what I mean? Like, I, I guess, like, you know, you understand what I'm saying? Like, I feel like Adam is manipulated, manipulative. He lies to people and doesn't fulfill his promises, and that's how he uses manipulation, and he uses sort of abuse tactics to get people to listen to him and whatnot, right? But, like, if somebody's actually giving you what you want, is it necessarily manipulation, you know what I mean? Because I feel like if you're manipulating someone, you're getting them to do something and then, like, stabbing them in the back later, almost. Like, you're manipulating them, um to do something promising or reward and then not giving it. Like, no, this is just an equal exchange. <laughs> like, she's offering something and people are getting like, it, you know what I mean? I feel like, like, I feel like manipulation involves uh, getting someone to act in a way that is not in their best interest yeah. through trickery. Yeah. And like, who's to say this isn't in their best interest well, if Salem if, is the one winning? If it was in their best interest, it should be easier to make them do it. Well, it is easy. Well, because she's manipulating them. Cal, I understand that you're manipulative okay. and therefore would want to defend your best Anyway, tactic. whether Salem is manipulative or not, she still follows all the other power, like the, the power, the five bases of power, and literally everything else we said, the VUCA, the transformational leadership. So even if she has a bit, like, manipulation inside of her, like, that shouldn't... She has five other power structures and then those other two things that we talked about. So in conclusion... Salem is a better leader than Ozpin. That doesn't make her a good person, but she's still a better leader, and that's kind of a scary thought for when you're when you're thinking about what's going on in the Ruby universe right now. But anyway, if you guys enjoyed this video, remember to comment down below. Make sure to join our Discord server and uh, check out our Patreon, and uh, we will see you later. Bye, guys.